All right, guys, I'm gonna definitely need your help with this one. Over the last few days, I've lost every single auction I've bid on. I've completely struck out. Now, you guys saw me lose the bid on the Autovlog C63, and that was to be expected. When I saw that car going for so little at the beginning of the auction, I definitely thought I'd throw my hat in the ring with a $25,000 bid. A lot of people said, hey, why didn't you bid higher? It would have been a great opportunity. Uh, you really blew it, all this sort of stuff. But you gotta keep in mind, not only do I have to pay fees, taxes, shipping, all sorts of other things on top of my bid price, and then you still gotta fix the car. So really, I do believe the person got a good deal around $30,000. Uh, it all depends on how well the engine fix goes. And like we've already discussed, we don't really know what the engine fix entails. Maybe we'll find out if that person that bought that car ever surfaces. But today I wanna to show you the Audi R8 that I lost by only $100 and also the Shelby GT500. I only lost it by $100 as well. And so what I'm gonna do right now is show you the live auction footage from the Shelby GT500, explain to you kind of what was going on there, show you the car itself, and this is the one that I think I really blew by losing this one. And I'm gonna tell you how I could have easily won it for a couple hundred dollars more. Here's the auction footage. And 3051, 2010, Ford Mustang, rebuttal, guys, rebuttal. And 7,908, hook it up, 8,000, 8,000, 81, 81, gonna be 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 now you might ask, well, how do you ever win auctions? You do win auctions. People get tired out and stop bidding. And I don't like getting into bidding wars. Bidding wars can definitely raise the cost of something by thousands of dollars when it's just two guys interested in something. I'd rather let the other guy have it and me wait for the next one because eventually you're gonna win. What ends up being a real shame about this is a few things. Number one is this car I could have bought it now for $9,800. That's what the insurance company was asking. I was hesitant on doing so because this car was pretty severely damaged, but I thought it would have made for an excellent rebuild project. To explain why it would make for such an excellent rebuild project, I want to go through the photos of the car with you to show you what I saw. So when we take a look at this first photo, this is obviously where the car has been damaged the most. It's in the front driver's side corner, but it's really taken out pretty much the entire front end of the car. The really nasty area here is the crash bar or the front support. You can see it's bent towards the passenger side and really it doesn't give us a clear image of how good the frame rails are. This car clearly has frame damage. Now we'll go on to the next photo. Now here's a farther out photo showing us basically what we just saw. It gives us an idea of how bad that front fender is and really how much damage this car has sustained. Like I said, this would not have been an easy rebuild project, but part of the reason why I think it would have been a good one, this car's got a little bit of everything. Some good framework, which definitely would require body work, which definitely requires good paint work, and we're not done there. Let me show you the next photo. Here's the rear end of the car, it looks pretty good. One thing I do notice is that the gap between the body of the car and the wheel is kind of off in the rear here, something that's 
A little odd, but these cars have pretty easy rear suspensions. They got what's called a solid rear axle. They're very simple suspensions, not a lot of components, and they're all fairly inexpensive. So in our next photo, we see that again, the passenger side rear and side is in pretty good shape. And here's our interior. We have one airbag deployed. Another reason I like this listing is because it only had this one airbag. Now we know that airbags lead to other damage, lights, seatbelts. However, one airbag is better than three or four. And again, it would have made for a great project because I could have gone through the details showing you how I remove the airbag and what else needs to be replaced. Again, and this is a great all around rebuild. And here's a good picture because it shows us the car is getting power with all those lights on the dashboard. We can't tell whether the car is running or not in this photo, although with the battery light on in this corner and the boost gauge at zero, my guess is, is that they just have the electronics on because I don't believe the engine even started in this car. Here's the rear seats. They look like they've never been used. And here is the money shot. It's our engine bay. I call it the money shop because this is where our money is in this car. If I would have gotten it and it would have been a total disaster, I know because I've had one of these cars before, this engine is worth a good amount of money. It's worth about $7,000 just the way it sits. The transmission's another two or $3,000. So right there, you've got $10,000 in just the engine and transmission, and you've still got a whole interior with electronics and a lot of other components to a relatively new Mustang. Now, the last thing I did with this Mustang was a quick VIN history check. Unfortunately, IAA said they couldn't get the car to start, so they didn't give the odometer reading, which is strange because obviously we saw the electronics working. But in 2014, this car had only 6,000 miles on it, and it didn't show any change in ownership. So it led me to believe this car was an original owner car with very low miles. Hopefully you understand why I like that car. If I could go back, I would have definitely just hit the buy it now button because it would have made for a very instructional rebuild project. Mustang parts are readily available, especially a Mustang that at this point is seven years old, and it's still a special car. It's a Shelby GT500, something I like. Something that we could have done a little bit more different of a build, we could have possibly put a different supercharger on it, done a whole lot of things. These cars are super customizable. As you guys know, that would have been a great car, but we didn't win it, so we're gonna have to move on. And that's where you guys come in to help me out. I need you to take to the comment section and let me know, what do you wanna see being rebuilt? Remember, let's keep it within reason here. Let's make it a good rebuild project. I wanna show you guys a little bit of everything in one car. I think that way you'll get the gist of whether this is something that you're really interested in doing or not. There's all sorts of different motivating factors to rebuilding a car. For me, I do it for fun. I enjoy doing it. And of course, it does save you a little bit of money in the long run. So with everything I've just said, tell me what you want to see being rebuilt. The sort of cars I see frequently in the comment section will help me dictate what I end up buying for a new rebuild project. And before you guys all jump in the comment section and type Audi R8, just keep in mind one thing. These cars are obviously way more rare than Mustangs. They're way more costlier than Mustangs. And really, the right one has to show up in order for me to bid. And that's great, and hopefully that will happen in the future, but it might take months to find the right one. That's why I want your advice down below in the comment section, what you think would make for a good rebuild project, something we could find maybe in the next week or two and get started on it almost immediately. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that super you know, exotic or higher end car that we get for a great deal anyway. So let me show you the Audi R8, unfortunately, I didn't get the auction footage from that, but I'll explain to you that one was much shorter, much simpler, it was me and one other bidder. So here it is. And as you can see from the front, that hood is folded in really, really nicely. But look at the rest of the front. From the driver's side angle here, it looks really pretty good. This front bumper support isn't bent in at all. Here's a radiator of some sort or an intercooler. If we continue on, we look and see past the hood, there's this tiny fender here, and the whole passenger side of the car is excellent. The rear of the car is excellent. A lot of the times when you get a hood hit and it pushes it back, you might have some scuffing on the edge of the door, on the edge of the fender. That's all stuff that I would just have touched up while they're repainting the hood. 
easy sort of repair. Now look at the interior, looks really very clean. It is an automatic and I do prefer a manual transmission, especially in a car like this, but I would definitely settle for an automatic because at the auction, you can't be too picky. This car had 28,945 miles on it and the engine bay looks immaculate. So the reason why I really liked this Audi R8 is clear. It's a very simple rebuild. The hood is damaged. You need a front bumper, you need a headlight, there's going to be different brackets, there's going to be different pieces of plastic that you're gonna need. Maybe there's some hose, you can see a hose right in this corner here that might need to be repaired. That stuff is all fairly simple. Might there be a few sensors and things like that? Sure, and they might even be costlier. But this is an exotic that doesn't appear to have any major frame damage. And when it comes to a very high-end car like this, it's the way I would want it if I were going to rebuild it. Any more damage and I'd rather just go out and buy a used one. And I also pre-bid this auction through my broker e-repairables. I put down a deposit to be able to bid up to $30,000. I don't like to just bid at an even number like 30,000. I think that that's a trick that most people do. So I bid $30,100. Well, the next morning I was outbid, so I went ahead and I just put in my max, $33,000, because again, I really figured this would have made for a great rebuild project. When bidding started on this car, it was in the mid-32,000, like $32,500. Uh, my $33,000 bid eventually hit, and the other person bidding against me was out of Las Vegas. They bid $33,100, and that was it. They won it for $33,100. $100 over my max bid. Now there's a couple other unknowns about this car. One of the major ones being how much clutch life is left. This car uses the same single clutch automatic transmission from the Lamborghini Gallardo and a clutch replacement is about a five to six thousand dollar service. Something I would have probably attempted myself and bought the parts but the parts are still over a couple thousand dollars. And besides that, you just don't know what other little imperfections could come when you get the car. So initially, the high bid I had come up with was right around 30,000, whether it was 29 or 31. I thought that that would have been the sweet spot. Remember, I would have had to pay at least another $1,000 in auction fees, at least another $2,000 in taxes, likely another $1,000 to ship it. This car was located right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. We're talking about a $33,000 bid that would have likely been $37,000 by the time I was just getting it to myself in damaged condition. And this same car seems to be trading hands with the clear title and no issues for around $60,000 to $65,000. Not to mention just the hood of this car is over $2,000. And now I realize I'm throwing out a lot of numbers to you guys, but this is the sort of stuff that goes around in my head when I'm going ahead and bidding on a car. Going back to one of the original comments in the video, why I didn't just go and bid higher, bid higher. I like to stay disciplined because if you go way over budget on these cars, it ends up making no sense. And yeah, while well, it might be fun for you guys to watch me rebuild it when I tell you how much I paid for it, you might contemplate why in the hell you're even watching me in the first place if I'm rebuilding a car and spending more than just going out and buying one right off the lot that I can drive tomorrow. So even though we've completely struck out on these last couple of auctions, that doesn't mean we're not gonna win one very soon. And with your help, with your suggestions, I know I'll be able to find something and maybe, like I said, right now, we just do a budget sports car build. I know a lot of you guys write me about Nissans and Hondas. That would be great to hold us over until we find something really special that pops up at the auction, makes for a really great rebuild. Maybe something really great pops up tomorrow morning. We just don't know until it happens. That's another reason it's important to stay very patient when bidding on these cars. Guys, thanks a whole lot for watching. I really do appreciate your comments below. I will be sure to read every single one. And with your comments, the cars that I see listed the most, and of course, reasonable options, I'm going to be doing a poll very soon, finding out from you guys what the cars you want to see being rebuilt. And if there's anything specific you want to see during the rebuild project, maybe like repairing airbags or certain paint jobs and things like that, definitely let me know. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to contact me. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Like I said, the second I win the next auction car, I'm taking straight to Instagram to let you guys know. Everything you need to do to follow me or email me is in the description box below. Thanks a whole lot for watching and I will catch you very soon.